Astros pregame presented by Toyota. Big League Baseball coming up from downtown Houston where the Astros looking to put a capper on what has been a very, very good homestand and a much needed successful homestand as well. The Astros and Rockies wrapping things up. Two game series here in Houston before heading to the Mile High City to start a two game series tomorrow in Denver and a five game road trip that'll head on to San Diego after that. But first things first, Astros looking to make it a seven and one homestand. Alongside Brian Bogusevic, Kevin Eschenfeld, it is good to welcome you in for a day of Major League Baseball. And a big day on the network, too, when you've got Houston Rockets basketball coming up a little bit later on as well. But first things first, the news not good for a team that has won six of its last seven on this homestand because Julia Morales tweets this just moments ago. The Astros have placed Jordan Alvarez, the Rookie of the Year in 2019, on the injured list with right knee discomfort. They will... That move will be uh, go back to 8-16, so that will be on. Uh, so you got at least until the 26th before Jordan Alvarez is back. Brian Bogusevic, former Houston Astro, with me today. And man, this is uh, it's scary news for for a lot of different reasons. First of all, he's a young player. Uh, secondly, he's a guy that had been off for so much time. He comes back two days later, and now he is already being placed back on the injured list with knee discomfort. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but you could sort of see it coming. When he was out of the lineup for the third straight day and you only have a 10-day injured list, it sort of made sense that if he wasn't going to be back in the next day or so, you might as well put him on the IL. But you see the immediate impact that he can have on this lineup. We saw it Friday night. So hopefully it was just a, a too quick of a ramp up down in Corpus trying to get back and it's not more than 10 days. Well, with the uh, injuries to Michael Brantley, and now of course to Jordan Alvarez. so. You're thinking somebody's got to pick things up, and it's got to be the pitching side of things, and that has certainly been the case because this team has pitched very, very well. Who would have thought that that side of it would have been ahead of the offensive side of it, but that's certainly been the case. Brandon Belak last night. Now back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back one-run victories for the Astros and another 2-1 win last night. That means you're pitching very well. Yeah, the pitching's been great, and this Astros team is sort of finding its identity and learning how to win close games. Conventional wisdom at the beginning of the year would have said they just slug it out and wait for the big inning and wait for the floodgates to open. That hasn't happened yet. So they're learning how to you know, scratch and claw and win these tight ball games without one big swing of the bat. So it's been the last week that this team has been able to flip that switch. And it's, it's whether it's the starters or the relievers, everybody. I mean, they gave up one run to the relievers in the entire series against Seattle last night. Uh, Colorado gets a run on two hits. You, you can't ask for a whole lot more than what you've gotten from these guys. And it's been, I think, the most uh, encouraging thing as far as Astros fans are concerned. It's been who has stepped up for this team, whether it's been Christian Javier, whether it's been Brandon Belak, guys that you didn't expect to see in the big leagues, much less succeeding in the big leagues. Well, it's very rare for a rookie pitcher to be asked to pitch a lot of meaningful innings on a contending team. It's almost unheard of to ask multiple rookies to fill multiple rows in the roles in the rotation stack them up in the in the bullpen and get meaningful innings out of them but you can see this group coming together they're sort of feeding off of each other learning as they go and they've really formed a nice core group of young starting pitchers to pair with a couple veterans last seven days i mean the secret to the astros success certainly has not been hitting three run home runs it's been the pitching and it goes on and on and on last seven days last week I mean, they're, they're pitching to the tune of an ERA of about a run and a half. Opponents not putting the ball in play. I, I understand they played a three-game series against Seattle. They played, they played San Francisco Giants, two teams that aren't very good offensively. But you know what? Uh, you still got to pitch to major league hitters, and uh, they've been able to get guys out. Yeah, and momentum's a real thing in this game, and it often it happens in a unit. It's a group of hitters, or in this case, a group of pitchers who just start feeding off of each other. And one good start leads to another good start. It's a good turn through the rotation. And they've just been able to build on it one after another. Have they benefited from looking around the room and it's it's not, there's Justin Verlander, there's Garrett Cole. They're, you know, they're looking at all these veterans. Instead, there's like, they, I pitched with this guy in Corpus last year. I pitched with this guy in Round Rock last year. It, does that help a little bit, you think? Yeah, it, it's really been trial by fire. They've gotten thrown in, and it's, it's sink or swim in the deep end. But what, what has been apparent is that these guys are not afraid to go out and attack major league hitters. And I think the comfort of having a group of guys that they know and are comfortable around has allowed these young pitchers to be themselves and just go out and attack, attack.
All right, stay with us. We've got plenty more to come. Just getting started on a day of big league baseball here on AT&T Sports. Now here's what's on deck on the Astros pregame presented by Toyota. Martin Maldonado may be the anchor to all that young pitching. The guy behind the plate showing that leadership. Yuli Gurriel showing what he can do at the plate right now. Swinging a very hot bat. And it's Grinky Day. Zach Grinky goes to the mound for the Astros today. It is always must watch TV. Back with more on the Astros pregame presented by Toyota. Astros pregame on AT&T Sportsnet is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. By HEB. No store does more than my HEB. And by Shoppa's John Deere. Your local John Deere dealer with eight area locations. This is a Twitter Tuesday. I encourage you to tweet in at ATT Sportsnet SW. You can tweet us at, and uh, we want to know your best sites and your best websites to go to for your baseball knowledge. The guys will be discussing that, and trust me, they've got uh, plenty of them and plenty of recommendations for you as well. Astros now five straight wins, seven and one on this homestand. If they can win today, which would be Best homestand that they would have had of eight games or more since 1989. And Martin Maldonado leading the way behind the plate defensively for the Astros. Well, he's always been a great defensive catcher. It's always been his calling card. It always will be his calling card. The catch and throw ability, we saw him the other night pick a slider out of the dirt backhanded and come up and throw a strike down to second base. And that is almost impossible to do. Yeah, but on your 34th birthday, what do you have to do? You have to go out and get your first stolen base in four years. First one in the American League. I think he should have held up the base like Ricky Henderson. Yeah, it was a, it was about as much of a milestone for him as it was for Ricky. He's an opportunistic player. If you think that he's ever taking a playoff or if he's ever going to let you get an inch on him, you are mistaken. He will take advantage of anything that he can get out there. All right, let's get more on Martin Maldonado and the finale of the homestand as we head to Minute Maid Park and join Julia Morales. Julia, how are you today? I'm good. I'm listening to Bogey there talking about uh, taking no plays off Martin Maldonado. He is intense, but at the same time, he's one of the most pleasant people to be around. You hear that from every single guy that talks about him. Um, so he's just got a way of turning it on when he gets onto the field. And he's definitely done that here in 2020, getting all the team MVP votes right out of the gate in that first series of the season, coming out with the hot bat and, of course, his 15 RBI. Impressive through the first 22 games for sure at the bottom of this lineup. But gosh, he does so much more. Are you guys talking about his defense right there as a receiver and then the leadership role that he's taken on. This was his first spring training and yes it was cut short and of course he had to come back for summer camp but this guy has never started a season with the Houston Astros. Remember he came over via trade the two years prior to that. So he is definitely he's obviously the number one catcher. He is in that leadership role given all the, the young pitching that they have on this team and he was asked if starting this year with the Astros impacted that at all. Take a listen. I would say yes, just because, you know, the staff that we have, the young guys, you know, they you know, they see me here, they know me, you know, I got a chance to talk to them. Um, spring training, the second spring training. So I would say yes. Um, the, other side, the other part say no, it's just because, you know, even I got here the last two years, you know, I feel like I, er I earned a lot of respect from, you know, the current players, you know, Olders, um, pitching staff, pitching guys, and uh, you know they know what I do. You know I, I just do everything they ask me to do, just to you know to help them. He's been great for the young guys, but also great for the veteran guys as well. Zach Grinky and him have been so much fun to watch his battery mate so far this year. Of course, Lance McCullers leaning on him, and then from Valdez, uh, he's been huge for him as well. So really helping everyone, including the coaching staff. They've had lots of questions for him, and he's had questions for the coaching staff. He knows when to, to ask for things. He's just he's doing a really nice job all around. Not getting a lot of days off. We're seeing that early on, and he is coming off of a, a, an off day, so hopefully coming in fresh. But he doesn't want days off as he wants to be out there every day every day with this team especially with the way he's been playing Kevin yeah the way he's looking at it 60 games he'll sleep in the offseason all right hey thanks very much Julia hey and you know we were talking about different websites to get different stats and things like that Martin Maldonado is a 235 hitter all you need to know about batting average 
He's got 15 runs batted in in 18 games. He has been a, a run-producing machine for this team. Yeah, he's a really intelligent hitter. Um, he understands pitching so well that he can take advantage of what he can figure out is the opposing pitcher's game plan against him. The effect that Martin Maldonado has on all of these young pitchers has sped up their development so much. So in the development of a pitcher, you have to first have the stuff. You have to then be able to command the stuff. And the final phase of that development is being able to manage a Major League Baseball game, being able to game plan and then be able to make adjustments in game. A veteran catcher can speed that up because he has the experience that these rookie pitchers don't have. The trust that these guys have in Martin Maldonado has allowed them to go out there and just simply execute pitches and not worry about the rest of the stuff because they know he's putting down the right fingers. Yeah, and so that just takes out one element, the thought process, right? Yeah. I mean, you just, just do what do what he says. Just go out there and execute a pitch with your best stuff, and you know it's and you have conviction in it because you know he's calling the right. Yeah, pitch. interesting. McCullers he gives up his first hit the other night of the game, and it was on a shakeoff in which, and then afterwards Martin said, uh, 75 pitches, 75 times during the game that I drop down signs. He only shakes me off about 150 times. But hey, that's a different. That's a veteran. The relievers. Talk about the, the I mean, the, whether it's Blake Taylor who got his first major league save last night. Uh, and the only Perret is the guys that are coming out of the bullpen for this team. You can go on and on from side Sneed. And, uh, the last, they, they hit very good to start the first 10 games of the season. Hit that bad week in which things really went haywire. But to their credit, they've been able to right the ship over the last five games. Well, things are falling into place for the bullpen. So a bullpen is built backwards. You start with the ninth inning, you establish your closer, then you get your setup guy and you work back from there. When Roberto Osuna went down, when Ryan Presley was hurt early, that threw everything into flux. Dusty Baker didn't know who to call on in what situation. Now guys are getting healthy, guys have sort of established themselves, and these roles are developing where you know Presley's the closer, Josh James slides into late innings, you know that you have Brooks Raley for lefties, Andre Scrub for righties, and guys are much more prone to be successful when they know what's going to be asked of them on a given night. And I think a big step in the right direction. Last night after uh, Ryan Presley had thrown two straight days, obviously wasn't available last night, Blake Taylor comes in and shuts the door on a, on a good offensive team, the Colorado Rockies, and picks up a save. Now you know you have another guy who can pitch in those types of situations. It's the Astros pregame. It's presented by Toyota. We come back to take a closer look at what Yuli's been up to, and that's rocking the Rockies. Back in a moment. Team Maldonado in the Astros bullpen as we speak. A little bit more than 20 minutes away from first pitch. He will catch Zach Grinke. They're talking it over right now about what signs to do because they don't want to. Zach Grinke does not want to wait four or five minutes to throw one pitch. That's what he said after the last. Nobody wants to wait four or five minutes for one pitch, <laughs> including us. <laughs> Alongside Brian Bogusevic, Kevin Eschenfelder back with you here. And uh, we welcome you back to the Astros pregame presented by Toyota. First pitch coming up in just a little while with TK, Blummer, and Julia from Minute Maid Park. Take a look at the Astros lineup. This was the story early. We started with this one today was that Jordan Alvarez has been placed on the 10-day injured list retroactive to Sunday. So it'll be Springer, Josh Reddick after a day off yesterday back in there as well as Alex Bregman who is in the three hole today. It'll be Yuli, Kyle Tucker, and Jose Altuve. Abra Abraham Toro is the designated hitter. Maldonado will catch and bat eighth, and it'll be the shortstop. Jack Mayfield, so Correa with the day off today for the Astros. Yeah, a bit of a different looking lineup than we're accustomed to. It'll be interesting to see with this bottom half of the lineup if Dusty Baker tries to force the issue a little bit. We saw him sacrifice bunt last night, maybe a hit and run somewhere, maybe a bunt and run, just try to force some action into that bottom of the lineup. Yuli Gurriel has always been fun to watch, it's really been fun to watch over the last week. And well, you're not fun if you're a man, Chuck and Doug, get out of the way. Not fun to watch, though, if you're if you're a pitcher for the Colorado Rockies. No, and he was giving Kyle Freeland fits last night. Uh, Freeland got ahead of him a couple times early, and Yuli was just fouling pitch off, fouling pitches off, fouling pitches off, making Freeland come back to him, and then doing what he does, putting the ball in play and getting hits. And this is two years in a row now that the Rockies have caught Yuli right in the middle of a hot streak. Right. No coincidence here. In the nine career games against the Colorado Rockies, he likes what he sees. 
an OPS of nearly 1,700. 1693 is his OPS, uh, but hitting 441 in that and, and doing damage with runners on base. He's a 600 hitter with score, runners in scoring position in his nine games against the Colorado Rockies. Yeah, and it's kind of, is it chicken or the egg? Does he get hot because he sees the Rockies or the Rockies just happen to see him when he gets hot? But I tell you what, this is the time. If you're Yuli Gurriel, you want to be hot right now because you're about to leave town and go to Coors Field, and that is a really good place to be swinging a hot bat. Zach Grinke gets the ball today for the Houston Astros. We'll talk more about the veteran right-hander when we come back. Astros pregame on AT&T Sportsnet is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Houston Methodist, the official health care provider of the Houston Astros. Houston Methodist, leading medicine. Grinky is a different dude. And if you don't believe it, you just got to see that right there. I don't, have you ever seen that? No, I've never seen that. I've never heard that. I guess that's the silver lining of no fans in the stands is that we get to hear everything that Zach Grinky says on the mound. Who, who would have thought that when he came over from Arizona that he would be the most entertaining player to watch on he, the field? He is. I mean, quirky, whatever the case may be, but effective. And I mean, just a guy that. I just enjoy watching him pitch because there's one thing that I see in a guy just blow people away. He's a guy, and we've talked about it before, he reminds you a little bit of Greg Maddox in the sense that he's not going to he's not gonna beat you with fastballs. He's going he's gonna to outpitch you, and that's, uh, that, it's fun to watch. Well, his evolution as, uh, as a pitcher as he's gotten older has been remarkable. In an age where everybody's trying to add velocity and go higher, he's actually subtracted. He keeps getting slower with his curveball. He still expands the range of velocity that the – Hitter has to cover. He just does it the other way, and the movement is there. He, I mean, he is a Greg Maddox reincarnated. Well, at the last three starts for him, at the Angels, two runs on three hits and five and two thirds. At Oakland, six shutout innings, and then against San Francisco, seven innings of one hit, one run baseball. Add it all up in those three starts. That's a 150 ERA with 16 strikeouts. You know what is it? Hitting is hitting is all about timing. You know, pitching is all about offsetting timing. And he is the he's the poster child for a guy that offsets timing. He is an incredibly frustrating at bat. Everything moves. Nothing is the same speed. His pitches overlap in speed. There's a lot of times that you walk back from back to the dugout after a bat against Zach Greinke, and they ask you what you saw, and you say, I, I don't know. And, and his ability to, I mean, when he wants it there, he puts it there. When he wants it there, he puts it there as well. Stay with us. Stay right there. When we come back, set the Colorado Rockies lineup as the Astros go for a quick two-game sweep here of the Rockies. It's a good offensive lineup for Bud Black's Colorado Rockies. Last night held to a solo home run by Trevor Story in the third inning and an infield single by Charlie Blackman in the ninth inning. The Hampson Story and Blackman, Arenado, Daniel Murphy's the DH, Tapia McMahon, David Dahl, the center fielder, hits eighth. And it'll be Tony Walters be behind the plate catching for Colorado. Brian Bogusevic, your keys to the game. What do you got? Well, the first key to the game for the Astros is to get in the pen of the Colorado Rockies. The Rockies starter ERA is fifth best in Major League Baseball, but the re reliever ERA is ranks 20th. The more innings that bullpen has to cover, the, the better the chances the Astros have of breaking it open late. Second key is old dog, new tricks. Zach Greinke spent a lot of time in, in the National League West. A lot of these Rockies hitters are familiar with him. He's got to come up with something new to show him today. So is that what you, I mean, that, that's the old, you know, you see this guy so many times. I think he's faced him nine times over the last 
two years. You know, if something's successful, do you stay with it? Do you change it because it had because they've seen it? You know, that's I guess that's the balancing act, right? I think you stick with it until they make you. He's as good as there is of recognizing that quickly. All right, Todd Callis, Jeff Blum, Julia Morales. They got the call of the game. Astros wrapping up this eight game home stand, six and one so far, and trying to keep the good times rolling. The game is coming up next here on AT&T Sportsnet.